Hello everyone and welcome to Photo Finds. I'm your host, Gavin Hatch. This past week, I had a quick and very last minute weekend trip up to St. Augustine, Florida. It's one of my favorite places to visit and I will show you why. St. Augustine is only two hours north of Orlando, so it makes it great for a getaway either just for one day or for a weekend, which is what I like to do. The city is famous for being the oldest city in our nation. It was founded on September 8, 1565 by Spanish Admiral and Florida's first governor, Pedro Mendez. The city is a popular travel destination for its Spanish colonial buildings as well as its elite 19th century architecture. The city's historic center is anchored by St. George Street, which is lined with historic houses from various periods. Most of these houses are reconstructions of buildings that had been burned or demolished over the years, though a few of them are original. St. George Street is also where you will find lots of small businesses and restaurants selling art and souvenirs. It's also where you will find the nation's oldest wooden schoolhouse. The exact date of construction is unknown, but it first appeared on tax records in 1716. The facility features a self-guided tour with robotic professor and student giving a brief history on the house. There are also numerous items with information posted around the building to read. Gardens located behind the house feature exhibits of the kitchen, a rebuilt outhouse, and an old well. Just steps away from the schoolhouse is the original city gates. The city was nearly 150 years old when the Spanish military and local residents finally decided to begin the process of fortifying the entire town. St. Augustine had been attacked a number of times over the years, but an English assault in 1702 led to the decision of putting up a wall around the entire city. The gates that were the only way in and out remain in place today. Since the city is so old and has changed throughout the years, anytime construction begins on any part of the town, an archaeological team has to come out and search through the grounds for pieces of items that can give us more insight on the history of the land. The day I was there, the team, that is completely made up of volunteers, had found pieces of dishes from the 1800s as well as bullets that might have been used in one of the many wars or attacks on the city. Now many will tell you that no trip to St. Augustine is complete without a visit to what many refer to as the fort. The Castillo de San Marcos is the oldest masonry fort in the continental United States. Construction began on the fort in 1672. After Britain gained control of Florida in 1763, St. Augustine became the capital of the British East Florida. And the fort was renamed Fort St. Mark until 1783 when Florida was transferred back to Spain. In 1821, the fort was designated as the United States Army Base and renamed Fort Marion. In 1942, the original name, Castillo de San Marcos, was restored by an act of Congress. The fort was declared a national monument in 1924, and after 251 years of continuous military possession, was deactivated in 1933. The 20-acre site was then turned over to United States National Park Service. Located on the western shore of Matanzas Bay, it gives great views of the city and bay from the top. It's only $7 for an adult to visit, and that allows you to visit for up to 7 days. The members of the National Park Service are everywhere to answer questions, provide insight, and some days they even give demonstrations of the cannons and different weapons used during the wars. Now when you stay in St. Augustine, I highly recommend staying in a bed and breakfast. The town is full of them, so you have many to choose from. We stayed at the Hemingway House and found it to be the best part of our trip. It's run by a lovely couple that really made us feel like we were at home and staying with our family. The room was the perfect size for us and the bed gave me the best night's sleep I've had in a long time. The best part about this, as well as many of the B&Bs, is that you are steps away from all the museums, attractions, shops, and restaurants. You never have to use your car around the city, you just leave it at the house. Walking around the city, you will see some of the most beautiful Spanish architecture. My favorite is Flagler College. This college was founded in 1968, but the 19-acre campus was home to the Ponce de Leon Hotel that was built in 1888 as a luxury hotel by millionaire developer and Standard Oil co-founder Henry M. Flagler. Across the street is the Leitner Museum that is full of mostly American antiques. The building was also constructed by Mr. Flagler and was home to the Hotel Alcazar in 1887. Today, it not only houses the museum, but also the city hall. Even though there is something for everyone, I would recommend this be a place to visit and leave the kids back at home. Even though it's very educational, it's even more romantic. Now let's head back to Orlando and take a look around downtown Disney as it's still undergoing its transformation to Disney Springs. 
As you can see here, the maps are now featuring new branding for Disney Springs, which is really cool. I got some shots of the exterior of Disney Quest, which is set to close its doors in 2016 to make room for an NBA experience. A lot of people are happy to see it go, but there are also those who wish to see it stay. In the comments below, let me know how you feel about its closure. In front of Disney Quest, you can see that there's more of these decorative coverings that are going up. Originally, they were going to be elevated sidewalks, but for some reason, that idea was shelved. They are great for getting out of the rain, though. A lot of construction is taking place around what used to be Pleasure Island, especially surrounding Planet Hollywood, but no changes can be seen on the actual Planet Hollywood building. The exterior of the hangar bar is looking great, and I'm really excited to see this complete. Across from the Boathouse restaurant, recently some new stores opened, one of which is the Tea Traders Cafe. Here you can get all kinds of fresh tea drinks and snacks, some even alcoholic. Near the T-Rex Cafe is some great concept art that gives you an idea of what the area will look like, as well as Planet Hollywood. Now something that you will notice next time you are visiting is the music. I was surprised to hear all new music in the three different parts of Disney Springs. It's all very modern, instrumental renditions of classic and even some new Disney songs that we know and love, and it's really noticeable when you're in the Marketplace area. Speaking of the Marketplace, I love the recently remodeled Margarita Kiosk. The World of Disney Store is still having some additions put on, and I got some more concept art, but here it features Disney characters. Overall, I'm really happy to see the changes being made to Disney Springs, and can't wait to see it all done. Well, that does it for this week's photo finds. In the comments below, let me know if you've ever been to St. Augustine, and what your favorite part about the city is. Until next time, get out, have fun, and enjoy the parks.